Welcome to Binge on Self Love podcast. I'm your host Anna, but you can call me Anchi. For the past few years, I've been struggling with binge eating disorder, severe procrastination issues, and a really poor self image. Any kind of self love has been pretty much non-existent. But I've realized I'm not alone in this, as millions of others struggle with accepting who they are, and we all fight our inner battles. I'm not an expert on this, nor I claim to be, but I have a story and I want to share it with you guys, raw and honest, with all its highs and lows. Every Tuesday, I share my experience, thoughts and tips on overcoming binge eating disorder, procrastination and tips on gaining self-love and respect. Join me and our listeners on our journey to build a healthier and kinder relationship with ourselves. Make sure to subscribe to Binge on Self Love podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss any future episode. For more content on binge eating, procrastination, self love, and self acceptance, visit bingeonselflove.com and follow me on Instagram at bingeonselflove. Disclaimer Binge on Self Love podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It doesn't provide professional medical advice and it is not a substitute for a diagnosis or treatment. Hello everyone, my name is Anna, but you can call me Anchi. If you're new here, welcome to the Binge on Salva podcast. If you've listened to this podcast before, then thank you so much for coming back and for tuning in. Do you also sometimes have those days when you wake up, when you stand in front of the mirror, when you put on your clothes and you just feel really uncomfortable in your own skin? I think everybody has those days at some point and sometimes I notice the old thinking patterns of the eating disorder creeps back in and I'm like, wouldn't life be better if I was just skinny? Wouldn't I be happier if my hips just weren't that wide or if my belly was flat and stuff like that? And those are moments when I start to question Will I ever learn to love my body? Will I ever feel comfortable? Is that even possible? And this is what I would like to chat about with you today. The negativity we often aim at ourselves, the body image, the disordered body image, and the overall progress of one's relationship towards their body. I have actually got a few suggestions on Instagram to do an episode and talk about how do you learn to love and accept your body and I will probably do a separate episode on that in future as well. But in this episode, I would like to kind of focus on is it possible to ever learn to love your body and how do you deal with different feelings throughout the recovery journey. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Will I ever learn to love my body? Will I ever learn to fully accept myself? And will I ever feel comfortable in my own skin? I'm sure many of us have asked ourselves these questions at one point or another. I ask myself this question every now and then, usually when I feel very low and when I feel very self-conscious. An eating disorder, disordered eating, body dysmorphia, but also very low self-esteem can do a lot of damage to the way we see and treat ourselves and our bodies. I have a long history of eating disorders from anorexia nervosa to binge eating disorder and I've treated my body not like my best friend, like my support system, not like a body that helps me to get through some of the most challenging situations in my life. But I've treated it like my biggest enemy. I have starved it, I have overexercised it, I haven't given it enough space to sleep, I've made it sick on purpose, I have filled my body with so much food that I was sick to my stomach and I could barely breathe and barely move. And even after getting one more chance after another, I still haven't felt like I love it. When I first started recovering from the binge eating disorder, I thought that at the end of the recovery, 
I will reach the ultimate goal, something like the final level of the recovery process and I will finally fully love my body and I will never doubt the way my body looks ever again nor how I feel about it. But that quite expectedly didn't happen and somewhere during the process, the recovery process, I started to realize that there's much more that I need to learn and that loving your body is a very broad term and can have different meanings. First things first, what has been very foolish of me was thinking that I will never doubt my body or doubt the way I look or feel self-conscious about my body. It just doesn't work like that. Everybody, every person, even someone who never struggled with any kind of eating disorder doubts themselves sometimes and doesn't feel comfortable in their own skin. We all have those days, periods, times, sometimes. Number two, having those days or moments or periods of time doesn't mean you don't love your body. I think having a relationship with your body is a bit similar to any kind of relationship. Sometimes you fight, sometimes you argue, but that doesn't mean you don't love each other. And number three, which was probably just my weird expectation, but for whatever reason, I thought that once I reach the state of loving my body, it will feel like a constant feeling of victory, positivity, and that I will just walk around and literally be rhapsodic about my body and how good I feel, almost like reaching a state of nirvana or something, although I'm just really guessing what that would feel like. I know how stupid that sounds and I don't even really know why I thought that. Maybe because reaching some sort of peace and love with my body felt so unrealistic and so out of reach that I imagined it must feel something like this. So far, being it three years since I started my binge eating recovery journey, I came to a conclusion that self-love, no matter how we define it, and loving your body is an ongoing process and it is not something like a level in a game that you can reach and once you pass that level you can never go back. At least that's how I feel about it. I think there's no one-size-fits-all answer to how to come to peace with your body and the journey to self-acceptance, peace, self-love is very unique. We all have different starting points, different goals and we're all going at a different pace. And what I find interesting is that it's not always our body that's changing, although our bodies will obviously change throughout the years, throughout the time. But sometimes our body stays pretty much the same and it's our perception of it that changes. Our body can be literally the same throughout the whole week and there we will have a few days when we feel super comfortable and super confident and then we have a few days when we feel like crap and we would like to change almost everything about ourselves. I've had a few days last week when I felt really low mentally. I looked at myself in the mirror and I felt like everything is wrong with me. I focused only on what I don't like and what I would like to change about myself from my hair through my smile, skin to different parts of my body. It was just a few crazy days. When I hear myself speaking about it, it may sound really superficial and self-absorbed, but I think anyone who went through something similar would agree that it's not really like you're trying to constantly think about the way you look. It's more you constantly feel like you're not good enough or just enough and you feel really uncomfortable and you start to doubt every little detail on your body. For example, last week I decided I desperately need to dye my hair blonde, I need to get my teeth whitened and I need to get my nails done. And I thought it will make me feel prettier and better and happier. I have done none of those things. Not that there would be anything wrong with them, because there isn't, but it's more like putting a plaster on a broken arm. You can't fix something that's going on inside by focusing all your attention on quote-unquote fixing the outside. And that's what I've tried to do so many times in the past, and it never worked. You may feel better after buying yourself a new piece of clothes, after getting your hair done or nails done or whatever, but that's all just temporary. 
I feel like once the initial excitement passes, you're going back to feeling the same like you did before. It's just like a temporary reinforcement, but the issue itself is rooted much deeper. And I think that no amount of clothes and makeup and all that glitz and glam can make you feel beautiful unless you learn to accept yourself without all those things. When I question my progress, when I doubt the way I look and how my body looks, what I found really helpful during those times is trying to think about what led me to that feeling. Sometimes you may figure out that you haven't been feeling well for some time. Maybe you will find out that you haven't treated yourself right. Maybe you have spent too much time on social media comparing yourself to somebody else. Maybe someone said something mean to you or maybe someone said something that triggered a certain feeling. Other times you will find out that there was no particular reason for feeling this way and it just happened. And the reason why I find this helpful is if you know what triggered the doubts and self-loathing behavior, you can try to avoid it the next time. I personally find triggering trying on clothes in the store, so I try to do that only when I feel good and positive about myself. Also, I figure that I feel bad and shitty whenever I spend the whole entire day in front of my computer and I don't do any kind of workout or activity and I don't even go outside. And also for me, social media are triggering sometimes. So I try to stay there for as long as I feel like good and positive and confident. Knowing what does and what doesn't work for you can help you the next time around when you start having these negative emotions about yourself and your body. I know that for someone who is dealing with an eating disorder, it may seem like you can never start loving your body. Your body and its weight seems to be your biggest enemy and you want to change everything about it. And in my honest opinion, that's the most important step you need to take to realize that your body is not your enemy. It's your best friend, your Paul, your everything. And it deserves to be treated with love and respect and it deserves to be healthy and so do you. You deserve to be happy as well. I've said this in this podcast multiple times before, but my biggest breakthrough moment in the recovery came once I made my health my number one priority. It was no longer about losing weight, no longer about trying to make my body look a certain way. No, it was about making my body healthy again. And nothing is ever perfect. Us, our lives, neither will be our recovery journeys. And any progress is progress. And even if you have those days and moments when you question whether you will ever learn to love your body, remember it's an ongoing process and having some of those days doesn't mean you don't love your body or that you will never learn to love your body. Loving your body, at least in my opinion, is not about feeling super positive and happy 100% of the time and being madly in love with every part of your body. I think it's more about accepting yourself and your body and being at peace with it and not necessarily trying to change everything about yourself. And I know that the idea of accepting our body exactly as it is without the need or desire to change something about it feels pretty scary. It goes against everything we believed in, everything we were told and thought by our eating disorder. I think it's sad how we struggle so much to accept ourselves, but we have no problem with accepting the way our friends or our family members look. You would never say a fraction of the mean things you say to yourself to somebody else. If anything, you would encourage the people you love and you would make sure they feel loved and beautiful. But when it comes to us and our own bodies, we're not so generous accepting and loving anymore. I think that many people who struggle with eating disorder will agree with me that as much as we wanted to believe the narrative, when we were 10 pounds, 20 pounds lighter, we weren't 10% or 20% more happy. And it's the false belief that being skinnier equals being happier. I do think that if you have certain health issues and your doctor recommends you to lose weight for the health benefits, 
then yes, absolutely, you can be happier once you're able to do the things you weren't able to do before. But other than that, I think weight loss doesn't make anyone happier. What makes us happier are the things we do, things we experience, people we hang out with, places we visit, things we accomplish, not how much or how little we wait. A few things that I personally find helpful both in general and on those days so when I feel crappy about my body and the way I look are number one to focus on treating your body right with patience and with focus on your health. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again and again, make your health your priority. It doesn't matter how wide your hips are, whether or not you have a flat stomach, whether you ate two chocolate bars instead of one, try focusing on your health. Are you treating your body the way it deserves to be treated? What new foods can you try? Is there any new activity you can try? Are you feeling okay? Are you spending enough time outside? All these different things. I've noticed that I have more of those shitty days when I feel disgusting and ugly and just overall unhappy with the way my body looks whenever I eat like shit, whenever I don't get any activity, whenever I just sit at my desk the entire day and whenever I spend too much time on social media. That's the pattern I figured out for me. And that's when I start to focus too much on what my body looks like and why I hate this and that about myself and how much I wish I could change this or that about myself. That's a clear sign for me that I need to do some adjustments and I need to make my health my priority again. Number two, what can help is not judging other people's bodies and appearance. Not only is it mean to judge other people's appearance, but it also constantly keeps you in the mindset of thinking about it and comparing yourself to somebody else. I think if you focus less on judging people based on their bodies and appearance, the more you will try to search for something more meaningful in them and the chances are you will try to search for something similar within yourself. Number three, try to be active and work out, but for all the other reasons. If you ever struggled with an eating disorder or disordered eating, chances are you have created this hateful relationship with exercise and now you automatically approach exercise as a tool for losing weight. But it doesn't have to be and it shouldn't be like that. I think staying active is really important, but for all the other reasons but to lose weight. Being active is helpful for both our physical and mental health. So try to find something that you will love and you will enjoy. It doesn't have to be going to the gym if you don't like going to the gym. You can do a little dance session at home. You can do some YouTube workouts. You can go for a walk more often. You can ride a bike, whatever it might be and whatever might work for you. Number four, treat your body right to accept it. I had the hardest time accepting my body when I knew I wasn't treating it right. I was spending so much time stuck at home, even before the lockdown, in my room, surrounded by junk food, feeling sad and unhappy, and I wasn't being active at all. I wasn't getting enough fresh air, I wasn't getting enough sleep, I stopped meditating, I stopped doing things that were making me happy. This is similar to point number one, but really try to treat your body right. Listen to your body and what it tries to say. Our bodies are smart enough, they give us hints, they try to tell us what's wrong, but very often we choose not to listen. And tip number five, learn to ignore messages communicated on social media. Not all of them are wrong, of course, but companies and marketers promote us a certain body standard, goals we should reach, and and they communicate a certain picture of what our bodies should look like and be like. Try to ignore them. Or if that's not possible for you, if you start noticing negative feelings when scrolling through social media, just stop. Your health, both mental health and physical health, are much more important than some social media. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to rate this podcast in Apple Podcasts and subscribe to Apple Podcasts and Spotify or Google Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. 
And don't forget that if you have any suggestions on future episodes, you can send me an email at anci at bingeonselflove.com or you can DM me on Instagram at bingeonselflove. Have a great rest of the week. Stay true to yourself and talk to you soon. Bye! Thank you so much for spending your time listening to Binge on Self Love podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe to Binge on Self Love podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss any future episode. You can find more content on binge eating, procrastination, and self-acceptance at bingeonselflove.com and on Instagram at bingeonselflove. Talk to you soon. Bye!